Hi, I'm Melissa Smith, and I am a student at the Chicago School of Professional Psychology at Xavier University of Louisiana. And today I'm going to speak a little bit about the challenges experienced by African American children and adolescents with sickle cell disease, and hopefully make the case for a mindfulness based intervention to alleviate psychosocial distress. Sickle cell disease is a chronic health condition that disproportionately affects individuals with African ancestry. Currently, it affects one in 365 African Americans, although as few as one in 13 possess the sickle cell trait, meaning they have the potential to pass on this autosomal recessive condition to offspring. Sickle cell disease is characterized by abnormalities in hemoglobin production, which is found in red blood cells. It's responsible for transporting oxygen to various organ systems. In individuals with sickle cell disease, the hemoglobin molecules in the red blood cell crystallize, leading to this crescent or sickle shape. And this change in shape can lead to tangles or blockages that disrupts the flow of nutrients and oxygen to vital organ systems. This can lead to a variety of serious and even life-threatening health complications, such as increased risk of infection, stroke, acute pain episodes, or organ failure. Given the intensive nature of treatment and the frequent hospitalizations for treatment, children and adolescents who have sickle cell disease tend to endorse higher levels of psychological distress. This includes increased rates of anxiety and depression, as well as general feelings of uncertainty about their future health and how that can influence long-term family, career, and education goals. They also describe feelings of social isolation and loneliness that are secondary to prolonged hospitalizations that separate them from family and classmates at school. So given some of the psychological distress experienced by this population, mindfulness-based interventions could serve as a helpful intervention to instill adaptive coping skills to alleviate psychological distress. Mindfulness-based interventions are rooted in Vipassana Buddhism, a Buddhist tradition which has been practiced for over 2,600 years. Mindfulness is generally defined as present moment awareness that's cultivated by paying attention to the present moment in a sustained and particular way with a non-judgmental attitude. It's influenced by foundational attitudes like curiosity, gratitude, and compassion. In clinical samples, researchers have offered mindfulness-based interventions to children and teens with a variety of psychological conditions. And in these studies, mindfulness-based interventions have been shown to cause large reductions in stress, depression, and somatization, as well as a moderate reduction in anxiety, a moderate improvement in self-esteem, and a small improvement in sleep quality, all targets that children and adolescents with sickle cell disease could benefit from. Looking specifically at the research offering mindfulness-based interventions to children and adolescents with chronic illnesses like sickle cell disease, there's an apparent gap in the literature. And this is primarily due to limitations to feasibility and acceptability of these interventions. Mindfulness-based interventions adapted for this population tend to be lengthy. They involve two and a half hour weekly sessions that occur over the course of two months often requiring families to travel to nearby hospitals, oftentimes the hospitals where these children and teens receive treatment for their health condition, which can turn, serve as an illness reminder. Overall, these studies generally note that they have recruitment difficulties and uh, difficulties with retention. So smaller sample sizes lead to difficulties um, validly examining the preliminary effects of mindfulness on various psychological variables. However, the preliminary effects show the potential to improve quality of life, reduce anxiety, pain catastrophizing, and pain intensity. Therefore, to optimize effectiveness of mindfulness-based interventions for youth with sickle cell disease, researchers should learn from the limitations in previous studies by recruiting from inpatient samples, offering this intervention at a time whenever teens are already at the hospital and often experiencing a lot of downtime. They should shorten the overall duration, incorporate multi-sensory and active exercises to engage their audience, use smaller age-based groups, recommend mobile-based apps for continued practice at home, and involve parents whenever possible so that the skills can be generalized to the home setting. 
overall, researchers should pay attention to these recommendations to enhance the feasibility and acceptability of these interventions to improve quality of life.